Welcome to Small Armor Solutions. Today we're doing a revisit to the KS-47 by Palmetto State Armory. The first video, video was done in July of 2019 with a 3,000 round test, and then the second one was September 2019. Now we're doing an update to 6,000 rounds. Uh, so far we've had 6,000 rounds through this rifle, uh, and I have to say this thing has performed excellent. We did a video where we compared the KS-47 to the, to the uh, Mark 47 Mutant by CMMG, the LAR-47 from Rock River Arms, as well as the uh, MCS by Wyndham Weaponry. They all took the AK-type magazines. And to my surprise and to a lot of people's surprises, this rifle here, which was significantly lower cost, outperformed all of them. Uh, this particular uh, rifle accepted more magazines than any of the other ones did. It was, the compatibility was far better than any of the other ones. The reliability was better than any of the other ones, and there was no question that the accuracy was better. So I decided I wanted to continue with this rifle and to see what was going to happen with it with more rounds downrange. Well, looking at some of the special features on the KS-47, again, we're starting with the AK-47 type magazine. We have a panel a magazine release, which is ambidextrous on either side or in the bottom. Now, this rifle is a Gen 2, and one of the changes of the Gen 2 were having an eight, was having an H buffer uh, instead of a standard buffer. Uh, basically, you have a very heavy recoil spring in here due to the, uh, the operating dynamics of the 7.62 by 39. The feed ramp, you have a single feed ramp instead of two ramps going up into the feed ramp. We have magazine over travel tra tabs on uh, the top of the upper receiver. We have some modifications to the bolt lugs, and also we have a change in the gas port size. So overall, we have a 16-inch chrome molly vanadium barrel nitride with a 1 in 10-inch twist, uh, six lines and grooves, right-hand twist. Now, the muzzle device we have on here has been added recently. This is a flash hider. It was designed for the Radical Firearms new Syntec 7.62 3D printed sound suppressor. Uh, this was brand new. We just got this out of uh, NFA jail probably uh, two months ago. So this was the first rifle that we were to test it on. Nemlock handguards. Uh, we have a mag the Magpul Mo uh, pistol grip on here with a CTR stock. So talking about uh, the functioning. Now, first off, there was only one problem that we had had with this rifle, and in the entire 6,000 rounds, we had some problems that were failure to eject. Basically, what had happened is the ejector spring uh, started to wear out. So what we did was we got a hold of one of the Springco, the heavy-duty uh, ejector springs, put that in there, and the problem completely went away. Now, for as far as ammunition was concerned, a vast majority of the ammunition that we used was Wolf and, uh, and Tula ammunition. However, uh, the best ammunition that we had for this with accuracy was the Norma 123 grain full metal jacket. Uh, that particular cartridge was what got us our best groups, and that's what we used uh, for, for accuracy. Ammunition is a little bit lighter on uh, pressure, so it's, it's not as high, high pressure as some of the other ones, but when you put it with the suppressor, it worked wonderfully. We're going to take this to the range, we're going to see how it shoots.
as you saw, accurate, our reliability was stellar, uh, suppressed and unsuppressed. Uh, for as far as the suppressor was concerned, uh, unfortunately, as of right now, uh, this suppressor has been discontinued. Now, looking at the suppressor again, uh, this suppressor is relatively long. It's uh, made from titanium. It's overall length of eight inches with an overall diameter of 1.75 inches or one three quarter inches. Weight 16 ounces, manufactured of titanium. Now for the decibel rate, you're looking at with a 308, 12.5 uh, inches from the muzzle, 136.7 decibels. Monolithic design, high temperature Cerakote. The muzzle device we have on here is a muzzle brake as well as a flash suppressor, it does both. Uh, of course, when you have one that does both, it doesn't do either one really, really good, but uh, it does work quite well and it is full auto rated. You know. Overall, I have been extremely pleased with this with this rifle. Uh, when I first got it, um, you know, people always will take price and say, you know, you get what you pay for. In some cases, that's not true. If you look at the MSRP we have on this gun versus what you have on its competitors, this is significantly less. But for as far as the engineering work that went into this, I think this is probably the best engineered of all of the ARs that take AK magazines. And first and foremost is magazines. Magazine interchangeability has been one of the biggest problems that I, that I saw with all of these guns that I had. Now, neither one of them like Pro Mag, none, none of them liked any of the American-made polymer magazines at Tapco. They wouldn't fit in. Uh, for as far as uh, the Russian magazines, East German, this rifle pretty much took all of them. Um, one of the, the things, AK magazines are what you would consider, uh, they're, not, they're not standardized. One of the big things that we do see is differences in lengths is in this area right here. Now, your locking latch on here is very, very different on some magazines. I have had some magazines with the other guns. This was actually longer than uh, than some of the other ones. And this would not even clear the trigger guard on one such as the LAR-47, where this particular rifle, I guess 47, has no problem with any of them. So the magazine compatibility uh, on this rifle was really, really a big deal. Uh, it, didn't, uh, it didn't pretty much care what we put in it. Um, for as far as improvements, the only thing that I probably would do is an improvement with this over what uh, the way it comes from Prime Minister Armory is. I would replace the extractor springs with the uh, spring co. I would go with the, the heavy, the heavy weight with the uh, spring and with the rubber donut. You can't use uh, the the buffer in the middle of the spring. You only can use uh, one or the other. I would do that now and replace the ejector spring uh, because those are the only two weaker links. I think due to the fact that the you know the cartridge case is larger and heavier it probably wears out that spring a little bit quicker but uh, those are the two modifications that I made to this rifle and it has worked flawless with any ammunition I put through it. Now one of the things that we're dealing with which is very unpleasant is once the ammunition dries up from Russia uh, we're going to have some problems with getting ammunition. However uh, the one cartridge that I found that I really tended to like was the Norma Tactical 124 grain uh, full metal jacket. Now this is a brass cartridge case uh, it's it's really uh, it's a really very very accurate bullet compared to the uh, Eastern Bloc ammunition. Uh, you have a good bullet. You have good propellant. Uh, you have brass. Uh, overall, this is a good round. It's not as expensive uh, as most, but certainly going to be more expensive than the, uh, the than we have for the Russian ammunition right now. But we're going to have a problem when that ammunition runs out in 7.62 by 39. It's going to affect a lot of shooters. Uh, but one of the rounds that's coming out that uh, you see quite a bit of it is the is the Norma. Uh, it's excellent quality. You can get this right on their website. Uh, I haven't really seen it anywhere other than on their website, but this is excellent 762 by 39mm ammunition. So we do hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please click like, please subscribe, and even better, share.